Good morning. It's a cold and blustery winter day at Utopia Farms. Got snowdrifts, lots of wind, brutally cold temperatures. So let's get inside and see what's happening in here. So last night was a really busy lambing night. So the first thing I do after everyone's fed and watered uh, and before I go around and examine each of the lambs, um, I'm going to mark them so that I don't lose track of who was who and when they're born, because that lets me know when they should be ready to go out of the jug. So this is the first one I have to deal with. So what I'll be doing is I'll scan her and put those numbers on her back. And while I'm in here, I'll do a quick assessment of this lamb to see if I feel like I need to come back and uh, do something with it. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know how these people do it. <laughs> they must, like, I must set up um, tripods and stuff to do all this, but I really can't be carrying a tripod around with me. So I'm just going to stop it, and I'm going to go around and do all this, and then I'll show you what uh, was done when I'm finished. Okay, so I recorded all the ones born last night, so that would be January 2nd. As you can see, we have, this one's um, this one's a grade. If I write pure Suffolk, it means she's not registrable, but she had twin boys. We had a registered Suffolk with a single large female, so I put large. Um, the next Suffolk, uh, had another uh, female, regular size. I only um, mark it down if something is different about the lamb. And then we had uh, two cross uh, dorsets from Hamish. Uh, one had a single female, one had twins, a boy and a girl. But uh, this one, she started to prolapse, she didn't. But she started to, it's a weakness when that happens. So I put call on her and prolapsed. She probably will get called afterwards because it tends to be genetic. Um, it wasn't because she was pushing and having lambs. She was starting to bulge a little before she actually had the lambs. So we had a spoon in her and uh, she lambed through the spoon. So uh, we'll have to make an executive decision on her. And then we had, um, another Suffolk. She had twin uh, girls from Gladiator. So we had three, six go in the overnight and now we're just starting the day. So I'll quickly show you these guys. What we did. Um, this is the girl. Who, she's really, really nervous too. Probably because we put a spoon in her earlier so she doesn't trust us anymore. But she has the twin lambs. So I, I'm staying away from her. Can't tell, but we have a spoon in her. That's the good thing about having some uh, wool on them when uh, when they lamb because uh, uh, the we tie the spoon to the wool. It's a little more comfortable than having to put a harness on. And it's not bulging out now, so hopefully she'll heal up and do okay. This is the girl who uh, had the single. She's got a really big ewe lamb and she's doing fine. These are the two uh, Suffolks. One of them's looking a little hungry. They were the last born last night. So I'm gonna probably see if uh, he wants some extra milk. Has, maybe he hasn't figured out the nipple yet, but I see one of them is uh, trying to get it. And who else yesterday? It was, was it you? Yeah, this one went last night too. Where's your lammy? Okay, you always have to be afraid that they're sitting on it, but she's not. But see how tight they snuggle in with them? Have to be very careful of that. That's why that, when they lay under there, is safer. But this... Oh, actually, no. This is the lamb last night who was looking at his mom with love. So they're, they're a really close bonded little group. This is the one that lambed last night. She has the two boys. 
That's why I put numbers on them. It lets me know uh, when they were born to. The order is important. So we got all twins. All these guys are good. Good, good, good. Good, good. Don't need to do anything extra with these. They've all adjusted. And these are the two born last night. This is the one that I marked large female. She's a beauty. She is a beauty. She really is. She's lovely. And this one has a lovely one too. Not quite as big. And they're doing fine too. So I'm just going to go uh, see if those two in the other pen need any milk. This is the you with the really big dorset lamb. She's totally freaked out because I'm in here, so I'm trying to be quiet. Um, and she's teaching him to be nervous because he's all nervous too. But she's trying to hide from me under the feeder. He doesn't know what's going on. I just tagged him. This is a beautiful ram. He's uh, just built perfectly with that deep chest, the straight back, the good legs and posture on him already. Woolly ears. Um, so far, um, we're liking this little ram lamb as a, a dorset ram keeper, maybe. <laughs> but she's spooky. Yeah. So we're gonna leave them alone. Let her calm down and relax. I guess Arnie's braving the brutal cold to remove manure from the pen we're going to put lambs into. So crazy how yesterday it was, there were all this snow had pretty well melted. Today, and it was warm, and today it's back to just miserably cold so cold so while he's cleaning out uh, this pen um, I'm gonna finish chores off while we have a break in the lambing so chores are all done so I'm just doing the barn check before we go in for lunch and um, I forgot to mention that in this tub here the sorting tub. Last night we had a ewe had her lambs in there so we cleaned it out and put some fresh straw in and we almost missed her because uh, she's laying down in there and as you can see um, we've got another uh, ewe who's got a really big udder and a big belly and she's set up residence in there uh, today. Oh, she might come out. She may, might have just been checking it. Is that your spot? You like that one? It's private, isn't it? So I quickly go in here and when they're all spaced out like this, all over the pen, usually nobody's lambing. Except uh, the only places that would be suspicious are the ones right in the corner. It's kind of foggy in here, so my camera's having a hard time focusing. But she's not doing anything. She's not straining or doing anything. So when I look around, it's pretty quiet. So we're going to assume that nobody's going to lamb and we can have a quiet lunch. Okay, so this is the afternoon check. Someone's rubbing against something, making a lot of noise. Hey, buddies, how y'all doing? Oh, yeah, she's rubbing her head. And there's a rod there that's making a lot of noise. So she's entertaining all the Suffolk lambs. Okay, we're going to do a quick check of how the lambs are doing. It's always checking. Those two are actually looking bright. So when uh, when you are just doing a cursory check, um, heads up is a good sign. You want to see that? 
even over here he's resting but his head's up oh he was asleep but woke up there's spooky mom still spooky this one's still loving her lamb these are the two that I gave a little help uh, this morning too. She, she's she got lots of milk on both sides, but she's an older ewe, so her nipples are a little tougher. Um, so um, lambs have to like, um, maybe suck a little stronger. So sometimes you have to watch that they actually are drinking because um, you can't always assume that they're latching on. And um, it's funny because when we bought our first uh, sheep, we bought the sheep and all the records came with them. And I noticed that the guy, when I went through all his uh, records and his notes and comments, is that he was losing a lot of lambs on day two. And from my experience, the only reason you're going to be losing lambs on day two is because you just put it in the lambs in with the mom and said they'll be fine they'll figure it out they don't always figure it out um that's why we're shepherds for those who are struggling the first day or two i mean they are infants uh you can't make that assumption you always got i find that you always got to assume that they haven't and err on the side of safety. Like I'm watching this guy. He's searching and searching for that nipple. But her nipple is, it's a big one. Uh, like I say, because she's an older you. And he did not latch on. So on my way back, I will come in here and I will try to physically put him on. And once they get the knack of it, with that little help, they're usually fine. It, it's usually the, like the first day or two that you really have to pay attention and some get it right away but some they just do need that little extra bit of help so these guys are all quiet and sleeping snuggled together means they're staying warm they all look good I let the adopted uh, not the adopted the mom that wanted to reject the lamb out this morning so I'm going to go into that pen and make sure that she's hanging out with him. But that one, see, he's under there, but his head's up. Those two are snuggled. This guy's out playing already. But you were just born. You playing already? That's an even better sign. Oh, yeah, you're playing already. You're just playing already. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing better than a happy lamb. Then you know everything's good. Again, I remember I got my very, very first Shetlands. Uh, years ago, they were my very first sheep. And I didn't know anything about sheep. And I never, ever saw that lamb nurse. But he did this all day long. And so I called the breeder and I said... How do I know if he's eating, if he's getting enough? And I told her he was hopping around. And she said, if he's doing that, he's definitely getting what he needs. But it's just all little things you learn. But yes, uh, a lamb that doesn't have enough food or isn't feeling well or whatever is not going to be doing that. And this is a twin too, so. Oh, you're spunky. You're spunky. Yes, you are very spunky. And actually, this is the mom. Yes. This is the mom who adopted a lamb. This is actually her lamb. The other one's laying over there. But the other one's good too, I swear. She loves them both. So this one might be keeper, keeper lamb too. Because she might have that mom's genetics in there. I know, everyone's a keeper one when I'm trying to downsize. But she's so pretty. 
You're so pretty, and you're so lively. How did you get to be so lively? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, some of them are just like they they're just born with personality. Eh? They just stand out. So I stand longer and bore you all with this more because this is what makes my day. This is what makes it all worthwhile. Because we're going into the barn now for the things that make you say, Why am I doing this? But this is this is the reason why. Okay? <laughs> You guys look very nice, too. You look lovely. Okay. Oh, and there, and there we go. There's the abandoned lamb. So I don't have to go in there. And that's the mom. See, he's kind of, the sp he's kind of spotty. And he's kind of weak, too. Remember, he had the raspy lungs? So I'm glad that she's become quite quiet and she hangs around with him. That's her and that's him. Because uh, he doesn't need someone running over him. But he's doing great. He's not on drugs anymore. But in this pen is where we have a problem. And I have a needle with me with penicillin in it. Um, she had a lamb that was in the wrong position. The head was down, so she couldn't give birth to it. It was blocking the birth canal. And she wasn't any showing any signs of labor. And yesterday afternoon, we noticed that she had a little bit of discharge and she was not acting right. So we thought we'd better check. And sure enough, uh, she had a lamb, it was dead, and it had been dead a while, but she couldn't pass it, and she wouldn't, didn't go into full labor, so we didn't notice it either, so uh, as a result, it died inside her, and when they die inside them, um, sometimes it's really hard to get them out because they aren't in labor, so we had to get lubed up and pull the lamb out. And because it had been in there, I don't know how long. It was a big lamb. Um, it was starting to rot. So she has an infection. And the smell, it's god-awful. It's just a terrible, terrible smell. So I want to uh, find her and give her some more antibiotics. We gave her some yesterday, but I want to give her some more. So you can see she's pretty quiet. I'm going to put this away and go try catch her. I just gave her a needle, and she didn't move, so she's really feeling bad. But the only thing we can do for her is to get that infection under control and hope for the best. Hey, sweetheart. It was a nasty pull. It didn't come out whole. So, and it was a big, big lamb. But it happens. Um, everybody says uh, lambing is their favorite part of having sheep. And to be honest, it's my absolute worst. <laughs> because there's always one of these things. I love the lambs, but not the lambing. So in the barn with the you that's not feeling well. On the Suffolk side. I do, you can see that they are starting to bung up at the front now. So while I was giving a shot to that Dorset ewe, I heard a little bit of bleating and I'm guessing that this girl is going to have a lamb. Or is it you? I think it's this one. No sacks or anything that I can see there yet. But she looks like she's going to lamb. And you, what are you doing? What are you doing? A 
And there's someone screaming in the other barn, so I'm going to go check that too. I don't see anything on either of these two, but this is the one that was in the corner, and I said watch ones in the corner. And this one along the wall. So a sure way to see who the culprit is for lambing is to stir up the hay. So I kicked it up to see how they'd respond. The girl in the back corner left. Hay is much more important, but this one's still here. She's the one, she's gonna lamb this afternoon. And so now that the feed has totally been dished out, uh, we can see that she's separated. She's still there. And did you hear that sound? That's the sound that says, there she goes. I'm having a baby. Jerry, so Jerry and Jezebel are eight weeks old now, so they're having their glam back six shots. And while oh, Jerry, we just gave Jerry his. And while we have Jezebel, we're gonna pull all those terrible burrs off her. So she looks beautiful again. We wanted to make sure Jezebel and Jerry got vaccinated on time since they're such <laughs> heavy little lambs and big eaters. We didn't want them to get overeating disease. So they've had their first vaccine and in one, <laughs> one month they'll have their final vaccine. And this is Jezebel. And we got all the birds off her. <laughs> and look at her fluffy ears. Hey, Jezzy. <laughs> oh, sweetie. <laughs> so right now it's Wild Mom's turn to take her big boy out into the pen. So she's getting trimmed. While Ernie does that, I'll show you that girl's nipple with an older you what type tends to happen sometimes. Can you see how big that nipple is? For a lamb's mouth, that's a really big nipple. And sometimes older ewes will get that. It's just from so having so many lambs and nursing. So um, me and Arnie are going to see if we can get those lambs right on there and see if they can suck it. Once they get older, it's not a problem, but right when they're newborn, it can be a problem. So we just put them in the, this big pen in front of the doors for a little while so that they get used to seeing the other ones. And once the things have calmed down, we'll let those two in and join the group. See how they manage. Okay, I'm in the pen with the mom with the bigger nipple. What I did, I checked both of them. The other one was soft, but this one was quite engorged. So I took a bottle and I actually milked out a half a bottle's worth of milk. This lamb here is looking quite full and satisfied. But this lamb was a little hunched up and shivering a bit. So I offered him the bottle and he drank the whole thing, about 300 ml. So he, we did the right thing there. He was hungry, he hadn't figured it out, and he's still shivery. So, in a newborn lamb that hasn't had a lot of colostrum because he wasn't sucking properly, um, and he's shivering, he's had a good meal now, but one thing we always do after that is to give him an enema because the enema is their first poop. It's a black poop. Hey, sweetheart. And if it doesn't come out, it can actually plug them up and they can go hypothermic and actually die uh, very quickly. So um, mother's colostrum is what encourages the bowel movement and the passage of that first um, uh, merconium poop. So just to be certain, because uh, it doesn't hurt them to give an enema, it's just uh, hot water in a syringe, and I bump his bum, 12 mils. I usually give two syringes, and the little thing at the end is what you get from a vet. Just attaches on like a, a needle to the syringe, but it's um, what vets use to uh, give cats medication, because cats are hard to get medicine in. So it's a little thing like that, and uh, most vets will give those to you, and they're great. 
So right. I'll show you how I do that, but I'm going to put the phone down first. So now that this lamb has been fed and had an enema, I'm guessing when I come back in an hour, he'll be feeling much better. Oh, oh see. And I gave this one an enema too. Because usually if one's like that, they both are. And it's a tough poo to get out. That's why they make that noise. There you can see all, all that that came out on the ground. That's all the black. It's like tar. So when we come back, I'm guessing that they'll be all uh, nice and comfortable and not shivering anymore and feeling much better. And it actually makes them uh, drink more then because they're feeling better. They can actually get bloated if, if, if they don't pass that. And then they won't eat. Okay, the mommy against the wall just had a big bouncing baby boy. Uh, I tried to describe it before when you pick up a Suffolk lamb. They they feel like they're um, solid, like they're they're not in the least bit frail. I think that's why they have a harder time getting up sometimes. Well, he wants to nurse already. We're wiping his nose and mouth off. Um, but they, they've got a, they're very solid sheep. Uh, the dorsets, when you pick them up, they may have the same, may have the size, but they just don't have that uh, bulk. Uh, and it's the meat qualities, eh? The coming out in the terminal breed. Lack of fame. <laughs> Good note. Uh, we'll head back to the house for dinner and we'll call that an end to another episode at Utopia Farms. Hope you guys will come and join us again tomorrow.